Hi guys, Olive here. Here today to do a review of Once Upon a River by Diane Setterfield. This was published in 2018 by Atria, or more specifically, Emily Bessler Books, and my hardcover copy comes in at 464 pages. This is a historical novel set in the late Victorian era with gothic and faintly magical elements to it. It is set in the town of Radcote, which is a real place. It's located about 20 miles outside of Oxford on the River Thames. On a cold winter's night in the tavern called called The Swan, which we're told is known locally for the great storytelling that goes on inside of it. A bloody and clearly badly injured man, by the looks of him, bursts into the place. He's carrying a dead child in his arms, so obviously there's been some sort of accident. But no one in the tavern knows who he is, nor can they fully comprehend how this child, clearly dead on arrival, suddenly comes back to life. Questions arise. Who are these strangers? What happened to them? Whose child is this? And how did she appear dead one second, then show herself to be alive the next? As we grow closer to the answers to some of these questions, we get a slow trickle of introductions to the very large cast of characters who make up this story. There's the woman who runs the Swan Tavern, first and foremost, alongside her sickly yet gifted storyteller of a husband. They have a troop of daughters between the two of them, but only one son who is extremely sweet, but who cannot tell a story like his father at all. There's also a doctor with a lingering desire to be a mother, although she firmly believes the time to have done so is in her past. We also meet a widowed housekeeper who is deathly afraid of the water, yet mysteriously chooses to reside in a shack next to the river. There's also a farmer, strong of both hand and of character, whose wife has an all-seeing eye that can peer directly into your soul and see if you're a good person or not, although she normally decides not to use it. They have a very large family, but their oldest son, who is now out on his own, is constantly getting into trouble. And lastly, there is a couple still grieving their kidnapped toddler, gone two years now without a trace. All of these individuals, and they really are individuals in the way that they are written, come together in the face of the mystery of the strangers that came into the swan on the night of the winter solstice. Eventually, three different competing identities come to be assigned to this little girl who was once dead and is now alive. The story takes place over a calendar year. So we begin at the start of winter and we close on the final day of winter of the following year, which ties in really nicely to the recurring theme of the life cycle in this book. The River Thames is a huge symbol of this in the novel. We're made to see that life can stand on one shore of the river and death another, that the power of the river can by turns sustain people both physically and spiritually, but in a moment can bombard and overtake you. It also seems to come to represent time and storytelling itself at once constant and fixed, but also fluid. Even the way Diane Sutterfield writes this novel seems to mimic the river. At times it twists, other times it's eerily still, sometimes it rushes at you, but always its power and depth will surprise you. There's also a lot about family in this book, which I felt strongly tied in to the fluid feeling of the story. A lot of the characters that you'll meet are family of one another, but not necessarily blood family. You will see what I mean if you choose to read it. I think one of the several reasons that I connected really strongly to this book was that it very much seemed to me that Diane Setterfield was saying that family is not necessarily defined by blood, that it's more about being there for someone than anything else, which is something that I absolutely agree with. But especially now that I'm looking back on the book as a whole, it's pretty clear to me that she was showing family to be a double-edged sword. Along those same lines, while there are a lot of things about this book that are optimistic, it is at points profoundly sad because there's this vein of fatalism running through the whole thing. There's an all but spoken statement in this book that people are who they are and that there's not much you can do to change the core of a person, especially with the character of Bess, 
who has the all-seeing eye that can see into someone's character and see if they're good or bad. It seems to be a very fixed thing, like it's not something that can change. It's something that I've been thinking about since I finished this book. Once Upon a River is a really great winter read. It's nearly dripping with the cold and everything about the Thames just jumps off the page. You can feel the damp in the air. You can feel the wind whipping against your face. You can hear the hum of the water in your ears. It is highly sensory and has all those delicious gothic vibes that I know will please my fellow fans of The Thirteenth Tale. But where The Thirteenth Tale was a love note to the written word, this book is a celebration of the oral tradition of storytelling. The way the patrons of the swan spin stories out of thin air, the ever-churning gossip mill of the town of Radkit, or how, as we see with some of these characters, the absence of words can make us forget or stunt our emotional journeys as people. This book is about the power that words have when spoken aloud. If it was not made crystal clear by now, let me just go ahead and say that I recommend this book extremely highly. It has all of the elements that I really loved about The Thirteenth Tale. The silky writing, the well-crafted story, the strong sense of atmosphere, and the really great characters. It wasn't just fun to read, which it was really fun to read, but it has given me a lot to chew on after the fact, which for me as a reader is of paramount importance. It's one of those books that I just wouldn't have felt right if I didn't give it the full five stars that it definitely deserved. So those were my thoughts on Diane Setterfield's latest release. I would love to hear from you in the comment section below if you've read this book. I would love to know what your thoughts were on it. Or you can tell me if you are planning to read this book, especially if my review convinced you. Us booktubers love hearing that kind of thing. Of course, those things or anything else you might want to chat with me about can go in the comment section below. But if you'd prefer to reach out to me somewhere other than YouTube, I am on a variety of different places on social media. Links to all of my profiles are linked in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.